We are going to tackle another JavaScript problem in this tutorial. The specific problem, how to compare two arrays without using any loops. Before we get started, make sure to click that bell button and subscribe. And remember the discount links to all my courses in the description. Also, my website has a list of all the tutorials I've published. There are over 200 now, and I'll link to that. The description also has a link to Patreon if you'd like to support this channel and get access to the code files. And finally, there is also a link to earn script. Now, this particular problem is a question from one of my students that I thought would be great for a tutorial. I think solving these types of problems can help you improve your JavaScript skills. And because of that, I'll link to a playlist of all the JavaScript problems I've done. I've done several of them so that you can view others that you may not have seen. This will give you some practice solving JavaScript problems. So let's look at this specific problem in more detail before we jump into it or before you give it a try. All right, so I have two arrays here, a word check array that has three words in it, and then a word list array that has a bunch of words in it. And what I'd like to do is compare this array to the word list array and compare each element, each of the words in here, and find out how many times it appears in the word list array. array. Now, what I'd like to return, I want to create a function, and what I'd like it to return is an array of objects. Now, each object will have the word from word check as a property and then the count as the value of that property. So here we have three objects. It would look something like this. And so that's what I want to get in return. And then I can quickly see the number of times each of these words exist in the other array. Now, if you'd like to try this on your own, go ahead and pause the video this time and go ahead and give it a try. And then post what you come up with in the comments. It's always good to see what others are doing as a part of these JavaScript problems. All right, let's go ahead and jump into solving this. So first, I want to set up a function because I want to call a function and be able to pass in two arrays so I can use it for multiple applications. So let's go ahead and do that first const i'm just going to call it count words the name right now is specific to the array examples i'm using i'm going to set up a function here i want to be able to pass in those two arrays so that's our function now let me just set up the basics of what we're going to do inside of this function so I'm not using any loops. Now, if I were to solve this with loops, I would have to have a loop running inside of a loop. I loop through these first, and then I would do a loop inside of that looping through all of these and figuring out a count for how many times it appears in that particular array. Well, I'm not gonna use any loops. And since my goal is to return an array, well, let's go ahead and map over let's use map to map over this array here the first one that's passed in that one we'll loop over that and create an array the end result will be an array that's what we use map for is we take one array and modify it and create a different array and so we want an array that looks like that so map is a good candidate so let me start off by just setting up a variable call it final count and this is going to be the end result this is going to have the end result after we map over the array that's passed in the words array now once that is completely done then we want to return final count from this function now I'm going to be using map and reduce in this solution first we're starting with map if you're unfamiliar with those two I'll link to some tutorials that explain those functions. Now with map, it's a higher order function. And so we pass in a function. That's the one parameter that we pass into map is a function. That function is going to act on each element as map iterates over the array. So one at a time, it will act on each one of those, okay? So it gives you an idea of what we're gonna be doing. We'll use that function to do a test for each one of these values. 
and figure out a count by going through this array down here. So let's go ahead and put that in. I'm going to do a regular function. Now the function we pass in, the one parameter that we need to have is a variable that will hold the value of each element as we iterate through that array. So I'm just going to call that word. Now what do we want to do inside of that function? Well, what I want to do, since I'm not using loops, is I want to take this array, the one that's passed in, which will be this for our example, and I want to reduce it down to just an object so that it will be an object like what we have here. So that object will take the word and it will make that the name of the name value pair here and then we'll get a count by going through this array we'll get a count of how many times it appears now so one of the things i love about reduce is you can do so many different things with it and this is another example of something unique we can do with reduce we're taking an array and we're going to reduce it down to an object that's the end result it's going to be an object and then each one of those objects will be added to this new array which will get returned and so we'll have a result something like this okay so let me go ahead and put compare dot reduce like that now with reduce we also pass in a function now this function will have at least two parameters one is the accumulator value accumulator value means the value that is continually returned as we iterate through all right so this accumulator values value is going to be the object that is the result at the end and then the next parameter we want to put is the actual value of each element so jump will be first test will be next and so on so we have the accumulator value and the value of the elements there's the body of our function now as a second parameter to reduce in addition to the function we also pass in an initial accumulator value now we want this to be an object so that's what we want to pass in as our initial accumulator value so i'm going to set up an object and i want this first word right here to be the key so i can do that with square brackets like that and then i put a colon and what's the current count while well, the current count is zero so there we have our initial object that's going to be passed in here when we start iterating through this array. All right, now all we have to do is check each one of these values as we go through the array. If the value is equal to word, then we simply, simply increment this number here. So pretty simple to do. Let me just do uh, an if statement change this in a minute because I want to show you another way to do this but to lowercase I'm gonna convert the case to lowercase so we're comparing same case here if that's equal to the value dot to lowercase if those two things are equal then what do we do well here's our accumulator which is an object it's this object here so we do the accumulator and then we want the word property. And what are we going to do with that word property? We're just going to increment it like that. So we've modified our accumulator value, but in order for this to be used in the next iteration, we need to return it. So I'll do that there. Now, if we were to do this as an arrow function, it would automatically return the value. I'm going to simplify what I've done more in just a little bit, but I didn't want to do too much of that because sometimes I find it's easier for people to understand what's going on when they're used to regular functions if I just use regular functions in these. So that's what I've done here. All right, so we return that accumulator value. For the next iteration, it is here, and so then checks the next value, adds to it if we need to. If not, it doesn't just continually returns that accumulator value 
the end result is an object that has the count. Now, we need that value to be returned as well. So up here, we add a return. So that it can be added into the new array that's being created by map. All right, so let's go ahead and try that out. Let me do a console log statement of the results of the function when I call it. So count, oops count words. I'm going to call that. I'm going to pass in word check and word list. And then we'll see what that returns. Okay, let's go ahead and save that and see what our results are. I'm going to display the console, refresh this page, and I get an array of three objects. So it looks like it's probably working. Here we have test. It occurs three times. Jump occurs once run occurs two times. So that's exactly what we're after. Now, before I end this, I just want to show you a quick shorthand here or a couple of different things we can do to shorten this more. I talked about arrow functions. We could do that. But something else we could just do is we don't need to we don't need to declare this variable since we're just returning it down here. Let's just do that all in one step. So make that a return and then we can eliminate this line down here. Something else I like to do to eliminate an if statement is I do shorthand for that as well. So I can do this part right here. I'm going to copy that. And if that's equal to true, what's going to happen is if I put a logical and right there, and then right after it, I put this. That's going to work just like that if statement. If this evaluates to true, then this is the part that gets shown. Okay, That's a shorthand that's available in JavaScript. Let me just show you at the console really quick. So if I have something like true and... Uh, let's just something like five. What gets returned? The five does. If that's false, and then the five does not get returned. It's the false. So that's a shortcut in JavaScript that can be used. And then if I used arrow functions, I could even reduce this down more. Anyway, I just wanted to show you that little shortcut, but just so you're aware that it's still working, let me save that. Go ahead and refresh. I'm still getting the three objects in the array, and they have the same values there. So a way to compare two arrays without using a loop. Really using some functional techniques for solving that problem. All right, please hit the like button and subscribe. And remember the discount links to all my courses in the description section. Click that bell button to be notified about new releases. I try to release a new tutorial each week. And thanks for watching.